Now let's start with our first section of the lecture topic normal fetal development and growth and this in this section we will specifically talk about the fetal development. This section is divided into uh, three parts. In the first part we will talk about what are the features that are specific to the growth of the fetus. And then we will talk about respiratory and central nervous system development. And also we will talk about the endocrine and cardiovascular system. So first the fetal development. Fetal development in when the fetus is growing and make sure we talk about this topic in detail when we talked in the gynecology, how the conception occurs and how the pregnancy starts. But uh, conception with the conception when the sperm and ova fertilize and with the embedding of that fertilized ovum in the endometrium of the uterus, the beginning of the development or the embryology starts. And in the beginning it's called the embryo and later on it's become the fetus. So there is increase, massive increase in the number of cells at this stage and in the developing embryo massive increase in cells occur but as compared to that massive increase in the cell the actual gain in the weight is small. So it's the comparison between the increase in the number of the cell and the growth of the or the uh, weight of the baby growing embryo is not same as the growth of the number of the cell. So actual gain in weight is smaller as compared to increase in the size or number of the cells. After that, the uh, cells grow and their baby or infant or fetus start growing, then there is accumulation of protein and adipose tissue and that slowly start increasing the weight of the uh, developing embryo. So increase in the number of cell is not the cause of the increase in the weight of the growing or developing em embryo. Actually the accumulation of protein and adipose tissue which is the fatty tissue is the factor that is responsible for increase in the weight of the growing embryo. The fetal birth weight, birth weight of the fetus depends on the different factors in which gestational age is important. Uh, premature babies are smaller in size as compared to full term baby. So gestational age plays an important role in the uh, birth weight of the baby. Then race. Race also plays an important role. Ethnic origin or race of Indian subcontinent. Usually the infants are smaller for the size as compared to European. They have the uh, average normal usually the weight. So race also plays an important role. Maternal height and weight plays a role if uh, maternal height and weight is average, usually the size of the baby is normal or average. And then parity. Parity is important, usually uh, multi-paras and um, uh, multiple gestations or uh, twin pregnancies, usually the weight of the baby is smaller as compared to um, the uh, other or single pregnancy or it's, it's multi so parity plays an important role also. So remember the weight of the baby is not um, as the cells are growing but it is mainly due to deposition of protein and adipose tissue. And there are some factors that play an important role in the weight of the 
developing embryo or weight of the baby at birth in which we have the uh, gestational age, race, weight of the and height of the mother and parity of the mother. These are the two uh, graphs that shows the difference between the uh, antenatal growth chart for small baby and this is the antenatal growth chart for average and here you can see maternal height is 150 centimeter weight 49 kg and ethnic origin is Indian subcontinent even parity is zero or is primary gravida first time pregnant no alive babies in both cases but you can see the difference in the beginning it's the uh, uh, growth for the smaller babies is more extensive but at the end at the time of uh, almost uh, uh, the time of the delivery usually they try to be or tend to be the same in both graphs so this is the graph for average in uh, uh, babies and this is the graph for smaller babies next is some characteristic appearances of the developing embryos or developing fetus uh, at different time of gestation if you see here in this is the baby at 12 weeks gestation the skin is translucent skin it's um, uh, thinner see-through skin there is no subcutaneous fat or adipose tissue in this the fetus react to stimuli upper limbs are fully developed distinguishable external genitalia are present so characteristic appearance of the fetus at about 12 weeks gestation skin is thin see-through upper limbs are developed no subcutaneous fat now at 16 weeks gestation the crown rump length is 122 millimeter crown ram, ram, crown from the head or crown to the rump or the uh, to the buttocks lower part this is the crown rump length so at 16 weeks gestation the crown rump length is about 122 millimeter now the lower limbs are developed also and also external genitalia so at 16 weeks this is the time usually when the ultrasound is performed roughly between 16 to 20 weeks at fifth month when the it's it's very easy to tell what's the sex of the uh, baby so this is the time period when the external genitalia are developed so 16th week gestation then at 24th week gestation now the crown and rump length is 210 millimeter now there are separated eyelids opaque skin now the skin becomes opaque and there is deposition of more and more adipose or fatty tissue subcutaneous fat that leads to the skin cause opaqueness of the skin and fine hair are present which are cover the body so fine hair covering the body so these are some characteristic differences in the appearance of the uh, fetus at 12 weeks, 16 weeks and 24 weeks gestation. Next, the development of fetal cardiovascular system. The heart develops as a single tube and usually at about four to five weeks of gestation the first uh, indication that the baby is a viable or a survivable pregnancy is the presence of the heartbeat so first ultrasound performed for the diagnosis of viable pregnancy usually the heartbeat is present it's a flickering of the heartbeat is the first sign that tells it's the viable pregnancy and usually that is about four to five weeks gestation 
pregnancy is counted from the first day of the last menstrual cycle. So that time when the first appointment or first ultrasound is performed or after the uh, missed cycle, usually it's already about five weeks gestation. So that's the time when the heartbeat is present. And heartbeat is about 140 beats per minute at that time. The mature fetal uh, circulation, the fetal circulation about 40% of the venous return entering the right atrium flows directly into the left atrium through foramen oval and then the cardiac output is about 200 ml per minute one kilogram body weight so it's one kg of body weight per minute cardiac output is 200 ml so just to uh, go over this diagram here, 40%, this is in the fetal circulation only, that 40% of venous return, this is the right atrium. The heart has four chambers. We have right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. In adults, the blood goes from right atrium to right ventricle and from right ventricle it goes to the oxygen get uh, to the lungs get oxygen come back to the left atrium and then left ventricle and then goes to aorta and into the body now if you see the difference between the fetal circulation and the adult circulation or the uh, infant circulation or the newborn circulation is at birth, after birth, the foramen oval closes. So once this foramen oval closes, then there is no uh, flow of blood from right atrium to left atrium. Sometimes uh, there is a problem in which the foramen oval does not close and it needs to be fixed. So this is the foramen oval between the right atrium and left atrium and 40% of return is from right atrium to left atrium. Here normally this is the superior vena cava. If you see the fetal circulation from superior vena cava, the blood comes into the right atrium. And also in the pregnancy, the blood flows from placenta into the, uh, through the ductus venosus umbilical vein and it goes into the right atrium in also. So right atrium is receiving blood from superior vena cava and also from the ductus venosus from where the blood is coming through placenta from the baby. Both these ductus venosus blood and superior vena cava goes to right atrium. 40% goes to left atrium through foramen oval. Remaining goes from right atrium to right ventricle and then it goes from right ventricle to the lungs and then get oxygen and then come back to left atrium, left ventricle and then comes from aorta again to the body, to the body of the and then here it goes to the uh, to the placenta to the baby also so this is the fetal cardiovascular system heart start growing as a single tube at 4 to 5 weeks of gestation and this is the difference between the uh, uh, fetal cardiovascular system and the infant or adult cardiovascular system no foramen well and then ductus arteriosus ductus venosus they are all part of the fetal cardiovascular system then the development of the central nervous system. This is the lateral view of the development of the central nervous system. The central nervous system developed as a simple neural plate. This is the begins as a simple neural plate and then it 
this simple neural plate it folds on itself and form a groove and then form the neural tube so and then this neural tube forms the brain and the spinal cord so nervous system begins as a neural plate and then this plate folds on itself and then forms the grooves and then these grooves form neural tube. This tube opens at initially at each end. Or both ends of this neural tube are open at the beginning and if they remain open and they do not close it leads to different neural tube defects, um, anencephaly and uh, meningocele, and all these neural tubes defects develop because the new the tube is not closing at both ends. So here, development of the nervous system begins as a simple plate, and then it folds on itself, forms the grooves and then this is open at both ends if these ends do not close it leads to neural tube defects if you see this um, uh, uh, tube here this is the prosencephalon then we have mesencephalon rhombin cephalon and this is the spinal cord and these are all the structures that give rise to different parts of the brain this is all the parts of the brain and then the spinal cord next the development of the respiratory system uh, it's detected at 12 weeks of gestation. At 34 week gestation, the respiratory rate is 40 to 60 per minute with intervening periods of apnea means no breathing. Apnea, no breathing. Nia is the term used for breathing. Apnea, no breathing or absence of the breathing. So respiratory system is detected at 12 weeks of gestation and by about 34 weeks, it's the respiratory rate is 40 to 60 movements per minute and there is period of apnea also. Here, if you see at fourth week, there is a formation of the pharynx and then there is a tracheal or lung bud are produced and then the trachea is formed and then there the trachea is divided into two parts, two lo lobes, lobules, two, two halves and then the lungs start forming at about eight weeks around the uh, bronchi and the bronchial tubes. So this is the uh, landmark. This starts forming pharynx and then at about fourth week, then the tracheal birds form and then by about eight weeks, um, the, al uh, the uh, alveoli, uh, the bronchioles are formed and then the lungs are divided into lobes also. Fetal breathing stimulation. What are the factors that stimulate the breathing of the fetus? Hypercapnia, increased level of carbon dioxide cause increase in breathing to uh, cause uh, exhalation of that breathing and then the raised maternal glucose level. So two factors can cause increase in the breathing of the fetus. One is increased carbon dioxide level known as hypercapnia and the other factor is raised glucose in the mater maternal blood. Again, the respiratory system, if you see, these are the alveoli. Uh, alveoli are the sacs where the exchange of gas takes place. So end of the bronchioles have the alveoli. If you see in this diagram, this is the trachea. Trachea is divided into right and left 
tubes and then these are form the right and left bronchi. Bronchioles are formed and at the end of the bronchioles there are alveoli and alveoli are the sacs uh, they are uh, responsible for the exchange of gases and this is the normal alveoli this is the collapsed alveoli and again this is the normal alveoli and this is the collapsed alveoli the microscopic appearance fetal pulmonary alveoli are lined by two types of cells Type 1 cells, they are mainly responsible for exchange of gases. And then type 2 cells are cells that produce uh, active phospholipid known as surfactant. Surfactant is the substance that is responsible for maintaining the potency or uh, as, as other in. Uh, conditions where there is decreased production of surfactant, there is collapse of the alveoli. So type 1 cells responsible for exchange of gases, type 2 cells they produce surfactant. And the surfactant is composed of uh, sphingomyelin and lecithin. And uh, later on you will see the measurement of uh, lecithin and sphingomyelin. It helps to find out if the lungs are mature or not. Lung maturity is determined by the lecithin concentration. Next, the development of the endocrine system. Endocrine system is the system uh, of the hormones and the glands. These uh, glands produce hormones and all that is in the endocrine system. It's the components of hypothalamic pituitary axis is developed at about 12 week gestation. Hypothalamic pituitary axis is very, very important. Hypothalamus is present in the brain that produce different hormones that act on the pituitary and then pituitary produce anterior and posterior pituitary, different hormones that perform different functions in the body and this axis is formed at about 12 weeks gestation. Thyrotropin releasing hormone and gonadotropin releasing hormone is end of first trimester which is at about the 12 weeks three months are uh, 12 weeks. So first trimester, uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, very important hormones produced by hypothalamus. Uh, they act on the pituitary, which in turn produce different hormones. So they are present at the end of first trimester. Then testosterone, testosterone is the hormone, male sex hormone. The interstitial cells of the testes also in the first trimester present and it increases in about, about 17 to 21 weeks. So all these uh, more or less in the first trimester uh, uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis is uh, start functioning and then also uh, testosterone is also present. This is the diagram that's just roughly showing the uh, thyroid uh, hormone at the time of conception. This is maternal thyroid hormone only. Then at about 12th week, which is first trimester, fetal thyroid starts functioning and then there is both maternal and fetal thyroid is functioning after the first trimester or 12 weeks of gestation. And then growth hormone is present again from early pregnancy. So endocrine system is basically start functioning early in the first trimester. So that was all about the fetal development and uh, uh, development of endocrine, respiratory, cardiovascular system. 
and how it takes place. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.